grab your glasses. You have time to grab your kids, grab your bag, which has those medications and everything else in your knee, and get out. Critical. So, like I say, probably we in Southern California see everything on this list, or might see everything except for hurricanes. Yeah, okay. you know, if you ever travel on your Marina del Rey, you actually see uh, signs on the side of the streets that say tsunami uh, evacuation route. So, they've been there for years. We have to prepare for all of these, <laughs> not just the earthquakes, not just the house fire. And again, what is a disaster? Well, first and foremost, it, it's an event that is unexpected, that you don't have time to prepare for at the time it's happening. Okay? Number two, the emergency services people are going to be overwhelmed. They are not going to be able to respond to each and every one of us. Plain and simple, they are overwhelmed. And third, lives, health, environment are in danger. Pretty much the de definition of a disaster. That means we have to be prepared to take care of ourselves, take care of our neighbors, take care of our community until the professionals can arrive. That may be a week, it may be two weeks, it's hard to say. It's going to, again, depend on the magnitude of the disaster. But again, now what's going to happen when we have a disaster? Think about all the things that will be impacted. Infrastructure, our freeways, our water supplies, our electrical grid could all be gone. Well, without freeways, without where's our food coming from? How's food going to get into Los Angeles? How's water going to get into Los Angeles? How's electricity going to get into Los Angeles? If it's a significant disaster, real simply, it isn't. Again, must be prepared, so we're losing our services, we're losing our utilities, we're losing our communications capabilities. Okay, very popular now are uh, the concept of uh, using uh, solar devices. So whether you have a solar generator or solar panels on your roof, you know, that's something certainly to consider uh, preparing for the unknown. And lastly, we're going to lose our financial services. The ATM machines are not going to be working. The credit card machines and stores are not going to be working. How many people have some cash in their emergency bags? What was your address again? <laughs> How many people have that cash in small bills? In ones? In fives? $20 is a lot to pay for a gallon of water. I know during the 74, 94 earthquake, excuse me, I stood in line to get a gallon of water or a few gallons of water. Fortunately, I had a $5 bill. They were not, in, they were not giving change. And also, some of these uh, items of the infrastructure are going to collide as far as their inaccessibility. If you think about it, when you go to a gas station, those pumps are run on electricity. And you also need to pay for it, so you're not going to be able to get gasoline. So how many people have at least a half a tank of gasoline in this car? Most of them. Not half. Yeah, you always need to have a little bit more than a half a tank of gas. This next slide we've talked about multiple times. <laughs> the professionals are not going to be there when you need them. We're going to be on our own. They're going to be going to the hospitals. They're going to be going to the schools. They're going to be going to the large buildings and high rises. Uh, again, very 94. What was it, Bill? 45 minutes until Station 18 up on Balboa near Knollwood could even get out of the fire station. Their doors jammed. Yeah. And they had a, now they've since fixed it so they can get out. That's not going to happen to them again, but that time it took them 45 minutes just to get out. So, the good news, hopefully, there are CERT volunteers in your neighborhood who can help. And again, we're here to suggest to all of you to become trained, to take the CERT training, to become CERT volunteers, if nothing else, to help yourself. If you don't want to, if you don't have time or you don't want to get back to the neighborhood and the community, we 
which of course we would like and everybody would like, your neighbors would like, that's great. Be able to take care of yourself so you're not dependent on someone else. Know what to do. Think about what other skills are needed in case of an emergency. And we're going to talk about map your neighborhood later tonight. That's a great way to know what skills your neighbors have. Do you need a plumber? Do you need an electrician? Do you need a carpenter? Do you need a nurse or a doctor, you know, who happens to live two or three doors down, who can help the, the neighborhood, the block? How many people have taken first aid? And I'm sure Red Cross has uh, been the people you've been working with. You notice here at this facility is wonderful. They have not only an AED, automated external defibrillator, but they also have an EpiPen. Because uh, quite a few people have allergies, especially students, uh, fall into that realm. So it's an awesome thing to know how to do. <coughs> so, as I said a couple times, CERT puts on a free class. CERT offers, offers a class. It's a seven, it's usually a seven week class. It meets once a week for about two and a half hours. Sometimes it's a weekday class, sometimes it's a weekend class. It's offered throughout Los Angeles. It's actually taught by the Los Angeles Fire Department. So the firefighters come out and teach it. Uh, this is the agenda for the class. It's 100% free. We ask for a commitment, if you sign up for the class, that you go to the class, nothing more. Many times, you'll get a backpack with some supplies in it. It again depends on who sponsors a particular class. But they even give you the 100-page the book for free, okay? Uh, and there are modules, in addition to the basic curriculum, there are modules that cover many of the other types of disasters as well. But let's talk about the class for a few minutes. The first section talks about disaster preparedness, some of the things you've already heard tonight. How to put together that emergency kit. And where do you need an emergency kit? Well, you need one in your house, of course. But you need one in your car. What about at work? If you're at work and the emergency strikes, where the disaster strikes, can you get home to your kit? Maybe, maybe not. Do your kids have a kit? You had that kit by your bed that's been talked about, but is it in a bag? How many people remember the 94th earthquake and how much of your furniture danced across the house? Well, if you just have those shoes or flashlight laying on the floor and it's in the middle of the night, where are they going to be if the earth starts shaking? Put them in a bag, tie it to the edge of your bed where you can get to it real quickly, but now you know where it's going to be. And, and maybe get those glow sticks. Have you ever seen those uh, things? Yeah. You know, attach it to the back. So then you always will have a light. And, and, and there's other things to put in that bag as well, but I don't want to get into all the details. How many people, we said, have a fire extinguisher in their house? How many people know how to use it? Any idea? When you use a normal size home fire extinguisher, when you pull that trigger, how long does it last? An hour? 20 minutes? Any idea? Two minutes. How about 20 seconds? 10 to 20 seconds, depending on the size. If that fire is bigger than a pail, you know, that high. forget it. Run. Do not try to put out a house fire with a fire extinguisher. Now you might use it to, to do a little suppression to get get out. That's a different story. But you're not going to put out a house fire. Also, how many people have seen a fire extinguisher used, whether on in person or on a TV show or movie? What happens when you pull that trigger? That stuff blows out pretty hard. Don't use it on a pan fire on your stove. You know where that fire is now. It's now on your wall you have a house fire, put a lid on that pan. Doesn't have to be the right lid, any lid. Suffocate the fire, put a wet towel on it, anything. But don't use that fire extinguisher, you just made the matter worse. <laughs> Some of the things they cover in the class, you know, when to use that fire extinguisher, how to use it. You actually get to practice, maybe with an electric fire extinguisher, but you get to practice how to properly use that fire extinguisher. Uh, fire safety, you 
utility control, how to turn off the gas meter, how to turn off the electric panels. Does everybody know how to do that? Those are things that are covered in the class. There's a gas meter in the back. If you have any questions, they'll be glad to show you how to use that one and how to turn it off manually. But if you turn it off, know when to turn it off because legally you're not allowed to turn it back on. The Department of Water and Power has to come out and turn it back on. Yes, Bill? Gas company. Gas company, excuse me, thank you. Sorry. The gas company has to come out and turn it back on because they got to check to make sure there's no leaks. And if you don't know how to do that and you turn it back on, you probably blew up your house and maybe your neighbor's house as well. So turn it off when you need to. Again, things that are taught in the class. Triage and basic first aid. Bandaging, wound care, opening your airway. What are the three primary killers? Triaging means prioritizing your victims. Now again, you maybe you're not working a large disaster. Maybe you're just helping your three kids and they're all hurt. Which one do you help first? Okay? Do you know how to decide which one is hurt worse? Something we can teach, you know, 30 seconds you can triage a person and determine where they are in that ranking. Like search and rescue. Again, maybe you are going home to home and helping your neighbors, helping them get out of their house. Maybe it's just a bookcase that fell on your spouse or your kid again, and you need to get that bookcase. Do you know how to do it safely so that you're not injuring them more? So while we're, we talk about helping your neighbors, this all applies to helping you and your family as well. Uh, disaster psychology, we heard a little bit about that. I think we're going to hear a lot more about that tonight. But again, we need to know how to take care of ourselves and our victims psychologically because there are major impacts. And terrorism and homeland defense, unfortunately, it's something we do have to talk about. And so that's one of our classes as well. And if you, get, if you have any questions about this, we'll be here after to talk about it. These are the upcoming classes that we're offering in the area. Uh, CERT-LA.com is our website for the LAFD uh, CERT program. Uh, if you go to the LAFD CERT tab, basic CERT training, there is a calendar or a list of all the upcoming classes. And all that you'll see listed is the current classes running and the next classes that are starting in March. They start classes roughly every two months. So they only put the next ones up. I've listed the ones that are starting here in the area. Uh, through March right now. There's also one starting in Encino, Woodland Hills. You can go to any class anywhere you want. And if you miss it, you have to take all seven classes to graduate. But if you miss one, you can always make it up. Either at a class somewhere else, or next time it comes around in your neighborhood, that opportunity is part of the program as well. Also, if you're part of an organization, and you can gather 20 three of your favorite friends, uh, you could also have the class <laughs> you. Okay, I've been given the one minute sign. Um, beyond basic training, we have monthly community meetings. So Battalion 15 does community meetings in Fire Station 87, which is on Balboa, just south of Devonshire. We will be doing a community meeting February 28th, Wednesday at 6.30 in the evening, and we're going to be talking about radios for radio communication. But we also do quarterly refreshers, so you actually get to go out and practice the skills you learn in class. And then we have call-out teams for those people who volunteer to go out on disasters or emergencies on a regular basis. And you, again, you go through additional training, you're sworn in as a state disaster services worker. Again, it's a volunteer position, uh, but you get to do that. And again, that's your choice if you want to go that route. But what makes this all work is having the community involved. Two or three of us are not going to save the community. Everybody in this room being trained means that we have that many fewer victims and that many more people to help treat the emergencies when they occur until those first responders do get there. 